Okay, we're back in public session, the Committee of the Whole meeting for March 20th, 2024. Um, we're at agenda item seven. All right, this is all light fare from here on out. So, um, all right, the semi-quincentennial. Okay, so July 2026 um, is the 250th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. So about six months ago, we got reached out to by the Daughters of the American Rev uh, Revolution who um, want to assist in any way they can. But um, I think when we went through this with the bicentennial, um, there was a lot of community collaboration to the point where I think we, whether county built it or not, I'm not sure, but there was a county-wide committee to orchestrate the celebrations for um, the bicentennial. So it included towns, villages, obviously, county people, the Daughters of the American Re uh, Revolution, um, to coordinate. Basically, if you're holding town or village celebrations, let's make sure that we're not duplicating efforts. Let's make sure we're not um, conflicting with each other schedule-wise, that kind of stuff. What are you doing? When are you doing it? That kind of thing. So. I think probably a good idea to do that again. I know that the state and the feds um, are already pushing out a lot of promotional material for it, and I think it's something we're probably going to want to do as a county too. So um, I think best thing to do, and Carissa, you can disagree if you want, is to maybe get a, a little small group together to sit down with the DAR um, and maybe snag the Allegheny County Historical Society um, and maybe a, a couple other people to just get a small working group together to say how would we best um, organize the celebrations and then at that point maybe consider forming a county ad hoc um, to to take it further down the road so um, Connected to that is, um, and I think this was probably about six months ago too, Brenda, but maybe I'm wrong. I asked Brenda to research the history of our county seal, and some of you probably remember it, it came, this one here, not our official seal, but this seal that we use on, um, what do we use it for? Marketing stuff, and you know, it's not our stamp kind of seal for legal purposes, but um, back in the for the bicentennial, the county held a seal design contest. And it was put out countywide, we, and we designated a separate committee to receive the county seal submissions, of which we got how many, Brenda? You think around, was it 30, 50? It was a lot. Um, but like half of them came from the same guy. Um, uh, and that committee, I think, narrowed it down to three. And then those three were presented to the board, and the board made the decision on who the winner was. And I think the award, there was a cash award that was not insignificant. It was like $500 or something, and somebody did the adjusted for inflation. And it was a, you know, it would be a lot of money these days to win that SEAL contest. So anyway, I don't know how you guys feel about the SEAL. I can describe how I feel about the seal. Um, and the gentleman who designed the seal has passed. So I don't mind saying, I don't like the seal. Um, it's, it's busy, it's confusing. It's, um, it, from a design standpoint, it's very difficult to actually utilize for anything that's smaller than like this sign right here. Um, so I actually personally think it would be a great idea for us to do another, for the semi-quincentennial, another seal redesign contest, and I am seeking the board's thoughts on that. Deb. I think the seal has its place, um, and I think we need to de determine what the use of this new seal would be. I, you know, I would hate to see it replace the current logo, which is a different thing than the seal. So uh, this is not a bad, I think it would be fun to do something like this, and the use of the seal would be to use to promote the sesquicentennial or the events, and that seal then would be used on all, countywide on all the events that are promoting the activities um, in 2026. 
I mean, I think you have to determine what that seal is because it will take on a life of its own. And you're right, that's not something that you can put on a lot of things. And I would, so if you're going to create a seal, I have no problem with that, or a mark, or a logo, or an identity for the activities, then that makes sense to me. And if and use during that, and then it gets retired back into revert whatever. back to this seal. No. 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 So I can just tell you that county seals, like the one we have up there, most of the counties did this as part of the bicentennial for, you know, 1976. This was, I think, maybe even a nationwide thing is that people made new seals. And I know a lot of the seals in New York State were done that year. Not all of them had contests, but some did have some contests. And that that's what you have um it's it's meant to kind of represent the county it's something every county has something very similar to this most counties um don't deviate from the circle and some representation of what's important in their county and i know we've been asked by the governor's office we've been asked by our federal reps for our seal um to put on display in different places they very clearly said they do not want our logo they do not want the maroon Allegheny County. They don't want our Western New York Wilds. They want the thing that, that looks like a circle with mm -hmm. pictures in it. Mm -hmm. Steve? Uh, yeah. It looks like to me, and I agree with you, that uh, when this seal was designed, somebody sat down and said, "What? list everything that ever happened in Allegheny County and put a picture of it in there. And it's. Uh, I don't think that's... Uh, creative i think that that's just busy and i think somebody with some design chops could probably do a better job it did take me a while to figure out what the hunk of cheese was i just kept staring at that <laughs> cylinder for years i'm like no that's a chunk of cheese there's a couple things in there that still nobody knows what that person is doing mike well loving history i'll just point out that there's a lot of historical significance to our current seal. Uh, it's busy, but the new seal wouldn't be as busy because we don't have the cheese to put that in there. We don't have to put the trestle in there. Uh, what else don't we have to put in there? Uh, I'm sure there's something else that's gone by the wayside. But we could put those little pocket parks uh, All right, let's keep this positive here. And there the are a lot of there. new and great <laughs> things happening in Allegheny County that deserve a place on a seal. But not so busy. But not so busy. This would be a great project for an ad hoc committee to pick up, determine the uses, determine the parameters. When you, If you send it out for a contest, you did, the ad hoc committee could determine the parameters around the design, in other words. Um, and I think they, I think we, did we find those, Brenda? They were relatively specific for the last contest. Yeah. Like it had to say Allegheny County, it had to list the year that it was established, um, things like that, had to be round. But anyway, that's just a food for thought thing. And so I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'll put an email out to the board. If anyone's interested in participating in a, a committee like that, just respond to the email and we'll see how much interest we have. And if we have none, then we'll, we'll make Brenda do it. I think, I think what you you're really want to do is not have an, an ad hoc or a subcommittee. Those terms, I think Allison would probably tell you or agree, would mean it's just totally made up of board members. I think okay. what you want is a citizen advisory committee, which Thank there's you. a section of law for that. And we could put a, a board member or two on there. Yes, yeah. and many other counties have already done this in New York State. I do have a copy of all their resolutions. Um, I've, I've met with the DAR. Um, NACO has some good resources on this as well as the DA, federal DAR. There are plenty of resources on how we can do it. Okay, cool. All right, so good on that. Gary. Microphone, please. I personally like the current seal. I think it's, a, it's meaningful. Uh, I, and I think that trying to replace it is kind of a waste of time and money. Thank you. Okay. All right. Onward? Okay. Um, speaking of pocket parks, um, Tom Windis isn't here today. 
Um, he, um, if he was here, he'd just give a brief update on the county forest improvements. The, the order has been placed for the timber. Um, I think way back, the original plan was probably to be constructing the pavilion, the first pavilion on the Travis lot for ribbon cutting, so to speak, in March. So they're a little bit behind that. But I think they are, they are prioritizing it because they want to get that done before they get into, you know, their actual work of the spring. So that's where that is. Kier um, has Angela, as we speak, working on uh, design for signage out there. Tom has ordered the materials necessary for the signage. What I wanted to talk to the board today about was the cost of the pavilions is coming in a lot lower um, than they expected. So if you remember, we allocated $321,000 towards all those lots. Um, so with that said, um, the intention was always that the, the carving out of the parking areas and the construction of these comfort facilities would be an effort to encourage future trail development on the properties. So um, knowing that, um, and knowing that there's a little bit of money that's going to be left over, um, l let me take a step back. This was ARPA money that's been allocated for uh, the purpose of improving county forest slots. Terry can fix me if I'm wrong, but w now that it's allocated, if we don't expend that money, we are not allowed to reallocate it towards a different purpose. Is that right, Terry? There's conflicting uh, um, information about that, but uh, my understanding, you know, as you know, we hired Dresser and Malecki to help us with that, and um, their interpretation of it is that you could still reallocate it to something else, but if you were going to use it for admin, that is something that you had to you couldn't you couldn't do that afterwards. So in, in what do you mean? What do you mean admin? If you were going to use it for admin costs to cover you know our costs or whatever, you couldn't do that if with leftover money before if you were going to try to do it after twelve thirty one twenty four. So I think that I've got some information. I, I can let you know what their interpretation is of it. But right now, you've all, you've really only spent fifteen thousand um, dollars for the work that they've completed so far. So, um, if we wanted to put it into improving uh, some parking for the county building, we could do that. It'd be all right. I would oppose that. So, <laughs> all right. So look, I'll, I'll cut to the chase here. Um, in speaking with Keir, if, if the end result is doing trail development on the county forest properties, best move forward would be to utilize some of that $321,000 to do some pre-engineering engineering and design work on trail construction. So you have that in hand to seek outside funding um, for the actual construction of trails. Now, what kind of trail that is, I think is something that gets flushed out in pre-engineering because the the firms that that do this kind of work look at the the soil composition and the topography and the you know the native species and so forth and they say okay this type of property is best for horses this type of property is best for side by side could withstand side by sides this kind of property um would be have to be low impact whether it's mountain bike or hiking or whatever um so um, knowing that it's already allocated, I am, I'm interested to hear the, what the board's thoughts are on pivoting with some of that money towards uh, uh, pre-engineering and engineering work on trails development. I have something to say. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Um, and it started long ago with our trails group of trying to build that system because that's really kind of that's what we're set up for so I would certainly agree with it too thank you any other thoughts Jan can you verify that ARPA money can be used for engineering studies
Could we, John. could we skim a little bit off the top or the bottom of that for Allegheny County's own county park, the oil springs, the two signs? I that, would, would that qualify? I would oppose that also personally, but but I but I would be in support of allocating some funds towards that that park. I I think Terry would have to look Terry you know, to see just how we worded our resolution. So is this money allocated just for the forest land? That's how it was presented. Because, because we have other um, county land. Yeah, you were sitting on county land. That <laughs> where there are some trails on. I mean, are you talking about all, trails on all of the county land or just the forest land? I think there are just in a couple. Where do we have districts, weren't they? Where do we have trails right here, on right county here. land? Existing trails on county land. This resolution says the proposed improvements are intended to improve access to county owned public lands, increase outdoor recreational opportunities, expand awareness of the Western New York Wilds brand, and encourage future trail development. Then it says the lots to be improved upon include. 1,272 acres and reside within or border six townships, Allen, Elmond, Angelica, Birdsell, Grove, and West Elmond. And then it lists the six, six spots. So you did have in there encourage future trail development. So I believe that what you're asking to do is certainly within the realm of this allocation of funds. Okay. So the board has already approved that. All right. Just John. another question. I'm yeah. fine with that. Does this have just on another thing? How about the money we put for the fair? Are we? Is that uh, got a? We took no action. We took no action on that, from my recollection. So it's not like we we haven't allocated any money to the fair. So they don't have to. Right. They, those funds were obtained elsewhere. Correct. Correct. But those what? funds are not those funds for the fair. You're not going to see those funds until probably 2000. 25, 26. I just talked to Lee James Friday about that. Those are long-term times before that money is going to be allocated. So you're we're going to give this one to Tim because Tim had a conversation with Delta uh, yesterday regarding that very subject. Uh, we we did talk with uh, Delta yesterday. They had indicated that within the next 60 days, the guidelines would be uh, coming out for how that money is to be accessed. I asked them when money would start to trickle, and they indicated that that money would be trickling within or shortly thereafter that 60 to 90 day period. So it's conceivable that this money could could be used within a year, but we do need to be working directly with the fair board to make sure that we know exactly what projects and what how that's going to be staged and phased uh, moving forward. But it, it, it appears based on our discussions yesterday with the folks from Delta Development that the money uh, will get the guidelines within the next uh, 60 days and money should start to trickle shortly thereafter. So uh, that's that's good news. So And there is, based on what we, we heard yesterday or heard, uh, talked to them, there is no match uh, required, but they need to, f to verify that because it was initially submitted under one cost category that called for a 25 percent county match but the funding that stream that it came out of does not require a match so those are some things that we need to look at whether or not we do have cushion from a budgetary standpoint with uh will we or will we not need match gary A month or like that. No, I uh, I use the word trickle just because I I didn't think that they would be like we we're going to see an automatic allocation of the four hundred twenty six thousand dollars. So it will come as we do projects and we identify what the need is for specific projects. Now the other question we need to to address is whether that's going to be uh, a pre allocation or a post allocation. So we may have to do the work and then be reimbursed by the by them. So. Mike. 
I believe there's another round of funding that either just came out or is about to come out uh, 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 to go uh, forward with the future projects. Is that correct? We uh, are in the process of submitting our applications for projects through Senator Schumer, Gillibrand's, uh, Senators uh, Gillibrand and, and uh, Schumer's office, and also Congressman Langworthy. We, they are ready to go, and those applications should be submitted within the next week. We do have a meeting coming up uh, on the 26th with representatives from those congressional offices to tour them on those projects that we're looking at uh, and kind of give them a preemptive view of, of our request. Thank you. Yeah, just to clear up uh, something in my mind, uh, because we're getting the federal money this uh, for the fair, this frees up some earmarked money from the uh, ARPA fund. Am I, am I right? You are. OK. The so, so we have to figure out how to spend that before when? What's the deadline on that? That, that was approved by a committee that fell off the floor um, on in 22. So you took no c continued action on that allocation. We have kept that out there, not knowing whether we're going to have to make the match or not. So until we know the match, we're not sure what money is available there. So then we will come back and reappropriate what we have. If it's the whole thing, it's the whole thing. If it's part of it, that's part of it that will fall to available money you can use. The other things we asked, as Tim mentioned, was if we're going to have to front the money for this federal funds or if we're going to be able to get some in advance or they're going to give us all those guidelines. There's going to be stipulations about <coughs> purchasing policies, procurement policies. They have to follow ours. They have to follow the feds. So it's going to take a lot of work. But it, it did. they did indicate that we are going to be able to see that money as soon as we start doing projects. So. Um, we're just going to have to be the lead agency on it and make sure everything's followed like it is. Thank you. Mr. Barnes. So how much money in ARPA funds did we have for the fairgrounds? I think it was about 475, um, 400 and something it was. I can try of to ARPA look that money. up. Yep, of ARPA and money. And this new federal grant of 425,000 is, is completely different. Completely separate, yep. So my position is the fairgrounds can use a hell of a lot more money than 425000 I think that we should keep the four hundred and fifty or 475000 It's already, they've got a lot of other things that they, they could do. It is the Allegheny County fairgrounds. I think that we should do whatever we can to do, do the, make that property <coughs> as... Uh, as good as it could possibly be, yeah. and as far as improvements. The number we put aside was 450. Just to be clear, it wasn't 475. It was 450. But um, yeah, and you know that's certainly up to you guys after we figure out if we've got to have a match to that money or not. But they did indicate that we might not need that at all. So it could be the whole 475. And just to further complicate matters, we're still we're still on task to provide our annual eighty five hundred dollars. We just once we need to get the contract to the board, and then we can take action on that in the next for, in, in the near future. Right, that's the budget allocation. Right, yes. mm -hmm. and it, we did budget it this year, Mike. Yeah. Uh, yes. Did we ever get a plan from the fair board? Yeah. So I think we got basically a bulleted list of improvements that they need. So that came up yesterday too. Delta is recommending that we take these two months and have some conversations in earnest with the fair board about them um, prioritizing their needs so that when we get guidance from um, HUD, um, we're prepared with the details necessary to, to make them feel comfortable with, with the project. We didn't get a sustainability plan. That's what I, I mean. I asked for her anyways. Was uh, so to uh, try to improve their overall financial picture. Uh, 
We did not get a sustainability plan, no. Thank you. Okay, so we want it a little bit um, outside the, the agenda subject matter, but that's the deal with what's going on at the county forest lots. We've already allocated it. We've already approved it by resolution. If the board really hates the idea of doing design work for trails, we can just make the next pavilion out of hand-carved uh, travertine marble. And then we could knock out that $321,000 and we're done. Um, okay, anything else on that before we move on? All right, uh, Carissa. I have something on P&D later. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. Don't need this committee. Okay. Um, all right, just real quick on community service recognition. Does everybody get the email? I dropped the ball in March, and I apologize for that. So D3 was supposed to be March. Now I'm hoping we can pack two into April. Do you, uh, D3 people, think you can get somebody around for April 10th, which would require pre-file, really, you know, a week prior? Would That's okay with you guys to do April 10th. And then D2, that would, your D2 was scheduled as April anyway, um, and you would be the last the last Wednesday of the month anyway. So District 2, you'll be April 24th. And then I sent um, that full schedule back out again today by email. Um, but it's just in descending order. It just goes 54321, 54321. So May will be 1, um, and then it loops back around to 5. And then um, I think Mike had requested maybe. Was that you, Mike, that requested the fair meeting? Somebody, maybe it was Fred, somebody requested, hold that thought, it might have been Fred requested the fair meeting in particular, so we'll, we'll sort that out when we get to it, but all right, so any questions on that? Okay, last fun one. Um, not all legislators went, but some time ago, I don't remember what month it was, um, Jen Ricketts um, organized a tour of some businesses in District 1. And so I know Carissa was there and Mallory was there, Keir was there, the District 1 legislators were there. Deb, were you there? No. Um, anyway, it was really, I think, worthwhile and enjoyable. And basically what it was, was um, she reached out to um, some District 1 business owners, and we did kind of a mini tour. And actually, Tom Windus was there too. Um, and he, was that right? No, he wasn't there. I'm mixing, yeah, I'm mixing my tours. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we hit up uh, Wiscoy Falls. We hit up Spring Bottom Farm, I think it's called, Spring Bottom. Um, we had lunch at the bakery in Fillmore. Um, it was almost a full day, but it was worthwhile. And so my question for the board is, is that something um, that you would like to consider doing in your own districts? Um, and whether we do that as a full board or if it's something you want to do just with the tourism economic development people to um, you know, kind of shepherd them around your district, give them an opportunity to see some businesses within your district maybe they're not familiar with. So we could do full board for that matter if you wanted to get really adventurous. The question is just, is that something we want to try to do in other districts. Any thoughts? Mr. Havey. I think it's a good idea. Um, I wasn't on that particular tour, so before uh, I would think about uh, having a District 4 one, I'd like to go on somebody else's tour that's successful and I could steal ideas. Thank you. Carissa? Jen did a great job organizing it, um, and she had the stops all picked out. Um, she'd contacted the business owners ahead of time so that we could have, you know, time set aside with most of them. I don't want to volunteer Jen, but I would suggest if anybody was thinking about it to talk to Jen about how she did it because it ran pretty smoothly. I think at the end of the day we did have to take maybe one off because there's only so many stops you can make in a day. But she, she even had a couple points of interest that, that didn't require um, any business owner to be there, just wanted to make sure um, that we knew where those spots were located in her district. 
we we could go to every county forest land in, in every district too. I'm surprised you haven't done that on your own time, Mike. Well, as a matter of fact, I have, but I was thinking of the rest of the board members that they probably haven't. You set it up, I'll be there. What did, Jan? You, what did you use for transportation? Multiple we, vehicles. It, yeah, we used our own um, vehicles, and we just put three or four people in a vehicle. I think we put one legislator from the district in each vehicle, too, kind of play tour guide. But um, Yeah, so it would look probably a little bit different than Jen's if you did full board. You would probably you probably would try to get a bus or something like that, but and it might change you know what where, what places you could go to or. But we, had, we had a bus for the other right that we they went and that was that was good. I think it's a good idea. I, I, I there's a lot of businesses in here in Allegheny County that we never talk about who are flourishing. And we never, they're never included in the chambers. They're out there. So, you know, I mean, I know of a lot of businesses. They're not in my district. They're in your guys' district that I would love to take you out to go and see. So I think it's a good idea. And if you're talking about um, moving forward with an economic development organization, one of the, one of our strategic uh, plans was how to um, work with all of our small businesses, existing businesses. So. You take it out of your take it out of the districts and let's just go and visit some of the businesses that we have here in the county. I mean, well, you can start by a good way. District. The good thing about doing it by district is the legislators do know those businesses and they have relationships with the business owners, so they can act as the planners for that kind of stuff. Um, plus, it makes it ensures that you know we're not going to Wellsville all the time or we're not going to Fillmore all the time, and it it lets the legislators in those districts cater the tour to what they're familiar with. So I would recommend keeping it in that structure. But what I'll do is I'll send an email. And if I'm not asking anybody to stand up now and say, let's do it. But I'll send an email. And if anybody's thinking, yes, I think that's something we can do in our district and we're willing to go first, just reply by email. And then we'll see where it goes from there. And I'm sure Mallory would be willing to assist in that stuff too, right? Yeah. I, I think I can't remember Matt, Mallory and Tim Keir and I were all on that tour and I think a lot of the businesses that we met ended up being contacts that we used throughout Camoin too and that we're very interested in working with Camoin and working on some of these mixers and we didn't necessarily have them on our radar before that tour. Okay, so we're good on that. I think that's it. I think we got through the agenda. Did I miss anything? If not, any old business? New business? Gretchen. I, um, we're getting ready to have a ribbon cutting on one of the trails that Impact's been working on, 244. It will be April 25th at 10 o'clock. Um, there'll be a save the date. But they got um, funding and that to um, repair and put a bridge in on that trail. So. I'll bring more information, but April 25th, um, meet up at the trailhead on 244, and then walk into the walk the trail a little bit down to the bridge. What's a little bit? Half a mile. Okay. <laughs> I asked. <laughs> Any other new business? I just <clears throat> remind everybody there's a gun show in Andover this week. If you want to go show your support for Second Amendment rights. And the Maple Festival is coming up the first weekend of April. Busy in Andover. Yeah, illegal immigrants apparently now have Second Amendment rights. You see that case out in Illinois? Anything for the go to the order? Mr. Healy. Mr. Chairman, um, I was remiss when the sheriff's uh, office gave their presentation on the Allegheny County Threat Assessment Group and the good work they're, they're doing on that front, not to mention uh, veterans. Uh, veterans, one specific group that needs to be reached out to and, and uh, considered when they're uh, doing their work. And I also believe that there's some funding available for, the, for them if, uh, through that group. And uh, <clears throat> they don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a couple other counties <clears throat> or that's an integral part of their, their plan. So. Thanks. Anything else for the good of the order? 
Mr. Would Chairman, I'm, as there yes, appears to be no other business to come before this legislator committee of a whole meeting, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Is there a second? Mr. Havey, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, and we're adjourned.